I want to speak to you this afternoon about casting out unclean spirits. Casting out unclean spirits. And I want you to go to Mark, the fourth chapter, please. The fourth chapter of Mark. Now, I know you have your Bible. I want everybody has their Bible. I'm not showing off, but I, uh, I want everybody has your Bible. Wave them at me right now. Upstairs, downstairs. Visitors, I want you to know you don't come here without your Bible. <clears throat> Otherwise, you're naked. Clothed with the word of the Lord. Let's begin in verse uh, at Mark, fourth chapter. Let's begin reading at verse 33. <clears throat> and with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. Now, remember he's at the seashore. He's talking to a multitude. Without a, but without a parable, he spake not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. And the same day, when the evening was come, he said, let's pass over on the other side. Now, remember, they go across toward the other side. A great storm of wind breaks down through the rest of the chapter. He stands up, rebukes the wind and the wave. And they're fearful to say, what kind of man is this that even winds and waves obey him? In chapter 5, they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes, and he has come out of the ship and meet there, met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Night and day he was in the mountains, tombs crying and cutting himself. Now, let me just go over the story with you. He comes to Jesus. And cries with a loud voice in verse 8. Jesus says, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him what his name was. And he said his name was Legion, for we're many. Besought him that they would <clears throat> allow the legion of demons to go into a herd of swine nearby. And <clears throat> verse 12, all the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine. They enter into him, to them. Jesus gave them leave. The unclean spirits go into the swine. The herd run violently down the steep place to the sea. Verse 13, they were about 2,000, were choked in the sea. They that fed the swine fled and told it to the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. They come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. <coughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you know what to preach and when to preach and how to preach it. Lord Jesus, I ask you now to honor what you've told me. You told me there would be people here. Lord, it's very unlikely that people would be here on a Sunday afternoon who would need this message. But Lord, I will simply obey you. I will obey you in this. I bring it not to the saints, but I bring this message to just a handful who may be here, who just slipped in here, may have come for the first time. Maybe somebody has been coming to this church and we have missed them. They have not yet come to this realization that they are possessed by unclean spirits. We pray, Lord Jesus, you give us an understanding. I need strength. <clears throat> I need help with my voice. And I give you praise. Lord, I honor you that everything that's to be said and done in this pulpit, Lord Jesus, we're here to glorify you. We're here to magnify your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, folks, we've been preaching to the saints here for a long, long time. You've heard grace. You've heard the wrath of God. You've heard how to walk in holiness. You've heard the covenant and the names of God. We've gone through so many truths with you. But lately, the Lord has been leading me and, and lately Pastor Carter also and other pastors to speak evangelistically, <clears throat> to speak to those who come in our midst. And you see, God can arrange a, a whole service like this to get to one person. This message, I tell you now, is not going to relate to most of you. You're not going to relate to the message. You may get a truth out of it. Something may open to you in other areas of truth that you, you want to pursue. But I want to speak to those, especially or battling something so deep and so ferocious in your life, you can't explain it. And it can't be explained in any other way but an unclean spirit. An unclean spirit that's taken habitation in your heart. 
I'm not going to go into some great message or discussion about demon possession, but we're going to talk about God's concern and love even for those who are being manipulated and controlled by unclean spirits. <clears throat> and in the chapter I just read to you, Jesus has just finished a discourse. And in fact, he's at the end of his discourse and uh, he suddenly dismisses. He stops. Now he's in a boat because of the press of the crowd and he's, he's in the sea and he's talking to this great multitude. And something stops him. Something stops him right in his track. In fact, the scripture says in one of the versions, in one of the gospels, that his mother and his brethren sought to seek, uh, to talk to him, and, and, and he put them off kindly, but he put them off because he had a mission, an urgent mission had come upon him. Jesus had heard a cry from across the sea from a single man, and he shuts the whole thing down, and he tells the disciples, move on right now across, and he pointed directly a cross, and the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over to the other side. Now this time, after he dismisses the crowd, he didn't invite the disciples to go away and rest a while with him as he did on other occasions. He didn't move on to another mass meeting, to another multitude. He didn't go to another synagogue to teach. He shut everything down because there was an urgent cry he heard. A wailing cry across the sea. An amazing thing happens. <clears throat> Jesus knew the cry was coming from the region of the Gadarenes. And the scripture says from the country of the Gadarenes. And in, in the Greek country here is empty, great empty expanse. Or large territory. And all he knew is this cry was in the area of the Gadarenes. And he evidently had told his disciples, we're going to the area, just get me near the shoreline of Gadarenes. <clears throat> Didn't know exactly where it was, but he knew that there was, a, there was a man hurting, there was a man crying and wailing. And so they had, now I believe that there are intelligences. I really believe that there are demonic intelligences. And I can assure you that those those unclean spirits that wander through dry places seeking rest flew over that sea to let a legion of demons know that the Son of God had heard a cry and that he's heading in their direction. You can imagine the turmoil of 2,000 some demons. Legion, uh, the Bible says there were at least 2,000 uh, unclean spirits of this man. Can you imagine the turmoil? Because they knew that when Jesus would come, he could send them into the abyss and they would be tormented before their time. They all knew Revelation 20. There's not a demon, there's not an unclean spirit in the atmosphere anywhere, the face of this universe that doesn't know and dread the 20th chapter of Revelation. They know that the day is going to come that they're going to be cast into an abyss and be tormented day and night forever. They know that. And they know that Jesus can come before the time and do it any time he chooses. Now I want you to know, no matter what you may think or maybe what you feel about it, there is not a demon possessed person on the face of the earth. If Jesus determines to drive out those demons, they go. They are, they are gone in a moment of time. <clears throat> Nothing can hinder it. Now this man is crying out day and night. Scripture says... Of some, they cried, and this is David speaking of idol worship. He says, they cry, but there's none to save them. This man cried, there had been no one to save him of this time. Now, he'd been, in this, he'd been in this condition, the Bible says, a long, long time. This man is living among the tombs. Now, it's not a graveyard like we think of. The tombs were cut. These are sepulchers of rock that are hewn into the side of a mountain. <clears throat> and he has chosen one of those sepulchers for his home. And this man has been chained time and time again. Now this man had friends, the Bible said later, because he went to testify to his friends. Jesus sent him there. So, you know, there, there comes a time a man can become so possessed by sin, he can be so possessed by alcohol or drugs, his family will put up with it for a while. Because you see, I'm after, this afternoon, alcoholics, drug addicts, those that are hooked on pornography, those who are hooked on gambling. I'm after those by the power of the Holy Ghost here this afternoon who have tried with all your power and all your might and you don't understand why you're sinking deeper and deeper into this sin. And you're here listening to me in the annex or you're here in this auditorium right now 
And you have a cry in your heart. Because you see that man that was living in the tombs, possessed of demons, is here this afternoon. He's in this congregation. Probably sitting nearby to you. It could be a teenager. It could be a woman. It could be a teenage girl. I'm talking about those who have been so bound by sin. Unclean spirit has taken control, driving you. I'm explaining the person that can't even walk up past a bar without going into it. A person who trembles at the very thought of the smell of alcohol. Who trembles when holding a bottle in their hand. The person so hooked on pornography can't go past a pornographic shop without looking in the window or being drawn in or going to the internet. It's there all the time. It just keeps growing and growing. And these, these, these unclean spirits seem to increase. The power of that spirit seems to increase all the time. Now, the chances of many walking in here today like that should be, uh, if I were a betting man, be one in a million. Do you understand God knows all these odds? He knows all of that. Just as sure as He knew, and He stopped down, and, and all of these Pharisees and scribes and all these religious people, they're sitting there listening, the Lord shuts it down. And see, He's shutting it down right now for we gospel people for just a bit because He's hearing the cry from somebody, and you're looking, and I said, this man, this woman may be sitting near you, but I know, because I know the work of the Holy Spirit, that you're in this building, and you're hearing my voice. And if you're not hearing my voice in this building, you're going to hear it on tape, video, or audio, and God is fishing after you, because you heard a cry. You say, I don't see anybody sitting next to me wild-eyed, I don't see anybody sitting next to me that hints that they are like this man, possessed, unable to control themselves. I don't see that. Well, of course not, because you and I look on the outside. And let me tell you something that's worse than this man out there in a tombstone, living, cutting himself with stones and bleeding, and crying out through the night. Let me tell you something that's far worse than that. And that's the pain, the mental anguish, the mental pain. The cry, the miserable cry of somebody who says, I know that I am destroying this temple that belongs to the Holy Ghost. And him, God said, he that destroys this temple, I will destroy him. And the conscience is screaming. And the cry of sin is screaming. And there's something inside that is a hold of you that as hard as you try, everything that you attempt, nothing works. Neither could any man tame him. Cutting himself with stones, <coughs> bound by lust, unclean habits. A righteous person may sit by you, you see, because you're not on the streets. I don't think we have many street people here today. You don't have to be in the street. You can still have a job. You can be sitting here now, and you know what I'm talking about because you know in your heart you're not in control anymore of your life. Something in you is driving you. Something you hate to do. How about last night? Did you get drunk? Did you drink again against your will? Were you driven to the adulterer's bed against again even though you hate it? And now you're even making yourself comfortable with it and maybe even loving it? Because an unclean spirit has caused you to, under, uh, to, to excuse it. And you've even used scripture to excuse it. <clears throat> He's given you lying spirits. Did you get high this past week? And hate what you did? It's like the crime you've heard me tell of these boys that we've dealt with over the years on drugs. So driven by their habit. Folks, I want you to know it's not just some kind of a physical substance. It's not some physical power in the drug itself. No, if that were it, then people could not stop it like those who go to jail. Black Muslims couldn't do it. Black Muslims by the thousands are quitting drugs and quitting alcohol. It were just a substance that held you. It's more than that. It's an unclean spirit behind it. So 
unclean spirit. Young man who tried so desperately to quit before he came into our center. When he did get there, his arm was burnt because he thought if he could burn off the track. And so he puts a frying pan on a hot stove and gets it hot and wraps a towel around it, presses it to his flesh to try to burn off the track. And he said, if I could burn off the track, I can get rid of my habit. And he had to go and get a fix to kill the pain of the burn. The other boy who, na- who got a pair of <clears throat> handcuffs and handcuffs him to a steam radiator in three days, sitting there thinking he could cure himself if he couldn't get out of the room. <laughs> Violet. Need for drugs pulls an 80 pound radiator out of the wall and carries that radiator to the pusher. And a boy who loads a needle with his own blood and he flips it to the ceiling and he writes in his own blood, Help! That's the cry. I speak of the soul tormented. Enslaved by an unclean spirit. Bound and crying in the middle of the night. The agony and the hurt. And the cry Jesus heard was not a cry for help really. It wasn't a cry for mercy. It wasn't a cry for God. It was just a cry of pain. It was a cry of torment. It was a cry of a lonely man who was driven Now we know the Bible hears the cry for help from those who reach out to God. We know that those who reach out for mercy, the scripture says, out of the depths, David said, I cried to the Lord and he heard me. There was forgiveness with thee. I cried to the Lord, my voice, he heard me from his holy hill. This poor man, David cried, I cried and the Lord heard me and saved me out of all my troubles. Now that's wonderful. We know God hears that kind of cry. But you see, there are are some people beyond that cry. This was not a cry for God. This was not the cry of the demons. God would never answer a cry of a demon. It's the cry he heard above the demon voices. A cry of pain so deep. A cry so deep it touched the heart of God while he's speaking to thousands. Jesus turns around and he says, let's go. He's after one man to answer one cry. I'm sure everyone had given up on this man because they'd chained and fettered him. Now when I hear of chains and fetters, I think of self-help programs. That's all. Because you see, that's exactly what society tries to do. We try to chain that lust. We try, we, 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 we take people, we isolate them away from their problem, put them in a program, <clears throat> all kinds of uh, alphabet programs. And, 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 and what happens, we, we clean them up on the outside and we give them uh, some cliches and we, we give them some psychology and and we say, go out and try, and this time you can do it, and we'll give you a friend, and you're in a problem, just call this friend, and, and you can make it, you can make it, that's the cry, you can make it. And the, the, these are self-health health hospitals and clinics, and they're run by good people, charitable, loving people. Some have absolutely given their life, and they care about people. But that's not the issue. I can prove to you that all self-help programs that suggests that an enslaved, bound person can get free by willpower or just setting their mind to it, I want to prove to you the scripture that's absolutely impossible. Absolutely impossible. Jesus said, you remember the story when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest? And he finds none and he saith, I will return into my home, my house, once I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. They enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Now folks, I've I've heard many people talk about this being some Christian that's all cleaned up, but it's not furnished with a word. That's so far from the truth. That had nothing to do with a Christian. 
This is a man that's gone to some self-help program. He's gotten cleaned up temporarily because I'm going to tell you what the devil said. I'm going back to my house. He could never, ever call it his house if the Holy Ghost had done a work in somebody's heart. It's no longer his house. He could not return. I see a clue as to why this man was possessed with so many demons, a whole legion. This swept and refurbished house was not the house of Christ. Absolutely impossible. The unclean spirit, I'm going back to my house. This is a person who got a temporary fix through self-help. He got pumped up with positive thoughts and steps on how to keep himself clean. He chained his own lust or habit for, a t- for a little while by being secluded. Ask anybody that's been through self-help programs. Program after program after program. And folks, I want to tell you how these things multiply. How did this man get 2,000 unclean spirits in him? <clears throat> Could it be that he had been to a first program and they chained him and they said, you're going to be all right, and they gave him steps. But you see, the Bible said when that unclean spirit goes out, he said, I'll return with seven other spirits more wicked than myself. And I'll tell you what, these are intelligent beings. And you can tell me, say, look, I kicked my habit on my own. I didn't need Christ. I didn't need a Holy Ghost program. I just mowed up my mind and I bit the bullet and I kicked the habit just like that. And there's some people who say, I did that. There are some people that 15 years ago quit using drugs, quit using alcohol. I haven't smoked, I haven't gambled, I haven't done any of these things five years, 10 years, 20 years. But look, let me tell you something, how these unclean spirits work. This unclean spirit could have been alcohol, could have been drugs. And this was a stronghold. And this intelligence finds that there, 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 there's, an, there's a principalities and powers. Our, our battle is against not flesh and blood, but principalities and powers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And, and here in these high places, they, <coughs> that's not spiritual high places. The word spiritual there means supernatural. It, it, these supernatural high places where the, these war, spiritual warfares are being fought. There was an agreement. And the, this is how it works so many times. You see, there are other unclean spirits. There, there's an unclean spirit of lust, the scripture talks about. Lying spirits, spirits of covetousness, spirit of fear, of anger, murder, clamoring spirits. <coughs> far worse than drugs, far worse than alcohol. And you see... This one spirit, he said, look, I'm going back to my house. <clears throat> but it'll be a tough go unless I keep quiet. Now let seven of you do your thing. I'm putting it down where you can understand it. Lust, you go after him. Anger, you go after him. Covetousness, you take over. But no, I'm not going to bother him about his drugs. I'm not going to bother him with alcohol anymore. So he can go around saying, I'm free from alcohol and there's no more lust for alcohol or drugs or gambling. But now, he's a covetous man who'll fight anybody for the dollar. He'll lie and he'll cheat and he'll have sex. Uh, he, he will have all kinds of... Uh, Lying spirits, he'll do anything to lie. He will, he will not live like he did before. No, he will not be on the streets. He say, I'm clean. And he can be possessed. There's seven more spirits more wicked than, what, than the one who first possessed him. It caused him all his troubles. Now, how many times do you have to have a self-help program and get a self-help cleaning and drive out seven when they're going to have, each of them going to have seven? You multiply seven times seven, you get 49. Multiply 49 times seven, you'll see how very quickly you can get to 2,000. And let me tell you the danger of it. Any program, and, and I'm speaking to the Teen Challenge ministry leaders This Thursday down in Pennsylvania, all the leaders of Teen Challenge are coming together. And I have a message on my heart, and it's it's simply this. I see some of them going now to psychology, 
And I see them taking other self-help steps that are, are, are the jargon of the world and it's not the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you what, if, if, if I don't care what Christian program it is, I don't care if it's down the Bowery here, any other mission that once started under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and had authority over the devil and drove the devil out of people and men who fasted and prayed and had that authority. And then suddenly they begin to go back because they don't want to pay the price to seek the face of God. And I'm telling you, these programs just open up those who come to us to seven more spirits more wicked than themselves. We may get them free of drugs and alcohol and send them out and full of covetousness and fear. The, the, the spirit of fear is far worse than any other, other spirit that you can imagine. God said He hates covetous more than any of these others. We can send them out covetous. We can send them out with anger, a spirit of murder. Do you understand what Jesus is saying? How many are understanding this? <laughs> How dangerous it is. How dangerous it is to try to think that we in our own power, that, that we through human resources can change lives. Impossible. And everyone listening to me now, I don't care what you're in. There's no doctor. There's no program. Now, if it's a Christ-centered program, where they're going to lay hands on you and believe that those unclean spirits can go and their spiritual authority and the word of the Lord is their text. Everything's going to be all right. <clears throat> but God help us otherwise. You see, when God, when God cleans a house, first thing he does is tear it down. Come on. It's purchased by the blood of Jesus. But he doesn't work on the old man. He said it's a new man. He tears it down. He pays off the mortgage on the land. He rebuilds it. And then he moves in first. And then he puts a sign out there under new management. The devil, if he came back, couldn't even find it. He wouldn't know what it looks like. It's a brand new building. Don't tell me that the devil is going to come back with seven more spirits to somebody truly born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. Impossible. <laughs> what an incredible night it was. That night just before freedom came to this man. Principalities and powers in them are in torment. They're frothing. They're screaming out using his voice. The inner turmoil must have been something incomprehensible. Now, why the storm? Why the storm? There's no question about it. The intelligence had gotten to these legion that Christ is on the way. Do you remember what the scripture says in Job 119? Behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon Job's children and they all died. <clears throat> God had let the wall down. Now, Jesus controls, but the prince, probably, the prince of this air can cause a storm, and this is what happened. He, the, devil, the devil never learns, but somehow they're going to stop him. They're going to try to sink this ship. Now, of course, it's a, it's, a, it's a teaching thing, but this, this was the enemy trying to... Dis, these. Demons, this, this, these unclean spirits did not want to leave this man. This is our habitation. This is where we belong. <clears throat> Jesus rises, stills the wind and the gnarly waves, and they arrive <clears throat> in the morning and land. And the scripture says, and they arrived, and he went forth to the land. And I see Jesus get out of the boat, and he's searching the hills, ears tuned to that cry. And suddenly a man comes running out of the tomb. The man is screaming and wailing, unshaven. I imagine fingernails and toenails, and the Bible said he was naked. Now, folks, I see tears in the eyes of our Master. I see tears in Jesus' eyes as that man comes. He's not going to get a lecture, he's not going to say, How did you get in such a horrible state? Why did you sin against such light? I wasn't going to get a lecture and I can see the master's face 
red hot with anger against Satan and what he does to human souls, human beings. And there was an anger in God's heart. But you see, God had arranged this meeting. Jesus had arranged this meeting. <clears throat> this man falls at his feet. Now, those demons didn't bow. There was something in this man that was reaching for reality and deliverance. There was something there. Jesus recognized that. And these demons cry out thinking of themselves only... <clears throat> Master, what do we have to do with you? In other words, what kind of business is this? We know at the judgment. In fact, Matthew says, have you come to torment us before the time? We know that we're going to be judged. We know the judgment day. We know what it says in Revelation. Why are you here now? What do we have to do with you now? What issue? What's the issue here? This is before the time. It's not right. It's not fair. They, you think for a moment Jesus would bargain with the devil? Jesus, as soon as he saw the man, says, come out. And, and, and they, they just say, wait, before we do, let, they had a plan. They had a plan. You know what it was? The Bible doesn't say, but I think I know what it was. They saw 2,000 two pigs. And by the way, most of the Gadarenes were Jews. This was a forbidden fruit. A forbidden, it was an unclean animal. They weren't to raise it. They weren't to touch it. They weren't to eat it. <clears throat> These demons said, look, let us go into this herd of swine. And they, I, I think what they thought, no, we'll go in there for temporary habitation. And then when they come to slaughter us, we'll attack the whole city. Every time they go to slay it, they just open up a vein and we go. And we, we go possess the whole city. Jesus knew their plan. And he knew pigs can't swim. <clears throat> he dismissed them into the swine and down they go to the sea and drown. And they're taken out into the abyss. The townspeople, when they do come, find the man sitting at the feet of Jesus, worshiping, clothed, and in his right mind. Clothed and in his right mind. Folks, the Lord has ranged another minute. Could it be that today he heard your cry last night and this past week and he arranged a whole scene again right out of this chapter? He is recreating that scene in this house right now. He heard your painful cry and he, he saw you. You see... Uh, the clothes here represents guilt and, and how people try to just tear off that guilt and try to run naked without that guilt and he knows what you've been through tr trying to throw off your guilt he knows how many times you have tried and failed but somehow he heard your cry I'm going to speak to those who somehow relate to what I'm preaching this afternoon. <clears throat> Those with a Christian background, you fell back. You've gone back to some old sinful way. You say, Brother Dave, my heart is so hard and I'm stubborn. And I've tried... I'm stiff-necked. That's what Moses said of all of Israel. He said, ever since I've known you, you've been stiff-necked. You've been a rebellious people. You've been stubborn. You don't obey God's word. You don't listen to his word. Ever since I've known you, you've been stiff-necked and stubborn. But Hosea 11, 8 said, God speaking, how shall I give you up, Ephraim or Israel? My heart is turned inside of me. I will not execute the fierceness of my anger upon you. I will not destroy you, Ephraim, for I am God and not man. Man will forget you. Man may leave you because they think you're too hard, but I don't see you that way. He said, I don't care. 
You may be here now saying, well, my heart is too hard. Well, I want you to know God took mercy time and time again on a rebellious, stiff-necked people when he saw the slightest reach toward his heart. I'm going to close in just a few moments. This is not a long message, but I want to come now in closing to show you what I believe the Lord is trying to teach us as a church out of this also. First of all, that the battle of unclean spirits didn't end when the last disciple died. Does it amaze you that you, you read of unclean spirits all through the New Testament? You read it all, everywhere Jesus went, he was casting out unclean spirits. You say, well, they didn't have hospitals in those days. In those days, they called it madness or, or mental disease. We call it mental disease. Well, no, 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 that's not mental disease. There is, there is mental disease. Much of it is caused by chemical imbalances and so forth, having nothing to do with Satan. <clears throat> Although there, there can be cases of that. No, this, this is something far beyond that. Did, did, did you ever wonder why... There's so little said about unclean spirits today. Why there's so little authority. Is it because we've become so compromised that we're afraid to stand before devils now? We're afraid that, like the sons of uh, Skeva, that they'll leap on you? Could it be that when you stand before somebody that you know is so bound and so horrendously driven by an unclean spirit that you do not have what Jesus had him saying, Satan calls and hath nothing in me? Could it be because you know that Jesus said these kind come forth only by prayer and fasting? You haven't fasted and prayed? But I don't want to tell you something, sinner. I want to tell you something, backslidden Christian, who's now you're back down and you say, I'm lower than I've ever been before. Let me tell you something now. Listen closely. <clears throat> You had an appointment with Jesus. He's in this room right now. Jesus is here. He's in the annex. He's in the balcony. He's all over this building. The Holy Spirit's here and Jesus. You are face to face with Jesus. The same Jesus who met this man. And you're standing before one of his servants. You see, he gave his servants power over the devil. He gave his servants power over every unclean spirit. And I'm telling you now, we're not to fear the devil, and I'm not afraid of the devil because I can stand here right now through the blood of Jesus and say, Satan, come and hath nothing in me. I can tell you that I've been fasting and praying. And I can tell you right now, I'm not boasting, I'm not challenging the devil, but I'm telling you now, if you have an unclean spirit in you and you're willing to acknowledge, this is something beyond just my nature. There's something that has a hold of me, and I've got to acknowledge now that I am bound. And if you bring that to Jesus today... I'm, I'm so glad Jesus didn't lay, him, lay his hand on that man's head. I'm so glad he didn't shake him. Trying to shake the devil out. And I'm so glad he didn't scream at him. Because that's what people are doing. They're trying to scream and chase the devil out of people because they don't have the power. The power is the spoken word. It's just the word from the Lord. It's the word according to his mind and his scripture. That's all it is. When you come for healing in a few moments... Nobody's going to lay hands on you. Nobody's going to shake you. Nobody's going to scream. We're going to have a bunch of people around you saying, what's your name? Trying to get legion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Something else I believe the Lord's trying to tell us. At least it's me. Yes, David, go ahead and preach to your multitudes. We, we preach to thousands here and everywhere I go this past weekend in, in Canada to many thousands go ahead and preach to your multitudes but don't ever lose the ear for the single cry of a hurting broken heart how easy it is to come to meeting the Times Square Church and meet with the multitude and come and sit as Jesus explains the word, the Holy Ghost explains the word to our hearts, and that's wonderful, but how easy it is to walk across and abide people that you look at, and you can't see the potential, you can't see the possibilities, and you say they're too hard gone. I know there's a couple right over here, a girl and, and, and a guy, 
that I've seen for four or five years and three or four others now that they, they, they die one by one of cancer and all kinds of diseases and and how many times I've looked at them and said ah oh, uh, there's no way they could be clean and I know I know I've walked past unclean spirits but God's been speaking in my heart take time with one individual folks it's always been that it's always been that and God's telling me that I really don't have the right to claim the blessing for multitudes until I claim the power and the authority for individuals. And, and so you say, God use me, I want God to use me. All right, go to the lowest, go to the most possessed, the most downtrodden person you can have and go with faith and stay there. And, and they, they, they don't even want to talk to you. You can stand right there and pray quietly in the name of Jesus. And so I pray against every unclean spirit in this man and every unclean spirit in this woman. And you keep praying until the devil gets tired of you hanging around. You, you ask God to tune your ear. And I really believe that a praying man or a praying person is going somehow, that cry going to reach your ear just as it reached the ear of Christ. He was not just looking for it. He was doing his father's business, but he had his ear tuned. God, give us an ear tuned to the cry. It may be of a child that you've missed in your own home. What's that? Balcony, annex, and here in the main floor. Some of you gentlemen I'm looking at right now, I'm just scanning the audience. And of course, I can't see in the annex, but the Lord does. I'm not looking for a, a big turnout here. I'm looking for the man. I'm looking for the woman who said, Pastor David, you described me. I'm that man. I'm that woman. I'm that boy. I'm that girl. I'm that teenager. That's me. I'm bound. I want to be free. If you'll take the courage to step out like this man did, the moment he was in the presence of Jesus, he came leaping and bowed before him and said, Jesus, set me free. I want you to get right out of your seat. And I want you to come up here right now. And in the, in the annex, I want you to come into this auditorium. Get, go to the, to the hallway, go out to the lobby, and the uh, usher show them how to get here to walk down this aisle. You say, I've got a habit, David. I've got a problem, and I want to be delivered in this meeting now. I know God put this on my heart. I know some have been in the verge of suicide. And Lord, you're going to save you from suicide today. The devil's not going to have your life. Jesus is going to have it. <clears throat> Folks, I appreciate it. There'll be no clapping from here to the rest of the mess. Uh, no matter what you see happening here, no clapping. Just open your heart. Raise your hands. Touch him on the back. Just touch him. Lift your hands. Thank him right now. Be clean in Jesus' name. Be clean in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes, worship him now. Just worship him. Every evil spirit depart in Jesus' name. Praise him. He's right here. He's giving you freedom now. Just love him. Tap this man on the shoulder, please. Just tap him on the shoulder. Yes, raise your hands. Sir, raise your hands, both hands, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, be clean, be cleansed, be cleansed, hallelujah. I want everybody to believe that Jesus loves you, and that Jesus is here to cleanse you, and you believe that there's power in Jesus to drive out every evil spirit and every unclean thing. I want you to just raise your hands right now. Raise your hands while I pray. And I want you to claim this right now. And when the moment we pray, I want you to begin to rejoice and thank Him. You don't have to jump. You don't have to manifest. And I command in Jesus' name there be no manifestation of any devil here today. In Jesus' name. You cannot manifest in the presence of the Lord now. In Jesus' name. 
in the holy name of Jesus, God's Son, through the shed blood of Christ our Lord, everlasting King, dominion over all powers of the enemy, every evil spirit, every lying spirit, every unclean spirit, depart this house. Depart every being that's here now. Go your way into the abyss. Go into the abyss. Depart. And be clean now in Jesus' name. Now raise your hands and worship Him. God doesn't take all day. He's here now and you claim it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I claim victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Every, every power, every lying spirit of the enemy. Thank Him right now. Jesus, I give you thanks. Every lying spirit to depart in the name of Jesus. Lord, I give you thanks. I want you to pray this prayer for me right now. Jesus, I give you my body, my spirit, my mind. Cleanse me. Sanctify me by your Holy Spirit now. Put a new song in my heart. Give me faith now to believe that through the power of the Holy Ghost, I can live victorious. I am not a slave of the devil. I'm a child of the king. And I'm a free man and a free woman. Thank you, Jesus. Give him thanks now. Give him thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. I want everybody to sing it. Lift your hands. The song that we were singing just now. Here am I. And let, let the Holy Spirit now come. Let the Holy Spirit. Listen. I don't have to question whether this happens or not. God said it happens. I receive it by faith right now, but you have to receive it by faith. I receive it for you. You receive it for yourself now. I know I'm free. I am not demon-possessed. I am not bound by unclean spirits. Those are gone now. Now God's going to ask you, God is going to ask you to cross the line right now and say, God, by your grace and with your Spirit, with the help of your Holy Spirit, I will be faithful to your word. That means you're going to go home and pray and begin to thank God for it. And you're going to, every time the enemy tries to come to you, say, no. I can say no now because I have the Holy Ghost backs up my no. I can say no now because I have the Spirit of the Lord upon me. (laughs) Hallelujah. You don't have to be pumped up for that. No, it's the Word of the Lord. You stand and say, I am clean. I am free in Jesus' name. Uh, What room do the counselors go to? Now, listen to me, please. I'd I'd like to have, in the annex and here in the main auditorium, we need some help with our counselors, all those appointed counselors. Could you uh, race up to that room right now? uh, We're going to need some help. And all I want you to do is take them by the hand and pray with them in faith and minister grace and hope. And all of you that came forward right now, listen to me, please. If you'll go, all of you who say, Pastor Dave, I've got to have someone with spiritual authority to just pray with me. I need to be drawn closer to the Lord. And I want somebody to stand in prayer with me who will pray for me and name my name before the Lord and and take me to the throne of grace. If, If you can, just slip out now and go up back upstairs those that came from downstairs from upstairs and those of you didn't know you go into the lobby turn right up the stairs and they'll direct you it's in the annex in room 206 and counselors if you'll go there if you will please and those that are here and in the annex there also anyone want to go into room 206 you can just kneel down and pray and our counselors will be there by you very quickly amen look at me now your part now is to give him the only thing that pleases him. <clears throat> In fact, without it, you can't please him. It's not the only thing that pleases him, but without it, you can't please him, and that's faith. I believe what God said. I believe. I met Jesus in a very special way today. Breaks the powers and the chains of darkness. No matter how I feel, I stand on his word. 
stand on that. I take it. I receive it. You do that by faith and you'll see what happens. The devil trembles at faith. He trembles when you stand on the Word. Remember, he, he, he tried to get Jesus on that and he finally left Jesus because he couldn't handle the Word. The devil can't handle the Word. Stand on the Word. Now, if you will, please. Lord, keep those that you have delivered and let them believe now with all of their hearts that there is a freedom, a newfound freedom, if they receive it by faith now in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, I want you to turn around. and uh, We have another service in about an hour at 6 o'clock here. We're going to dismiss this service. Uh, but uh, those of you who are going to go upstairs, we're going to have, uh, let's uh, just sing one chorus again. <clears throat> Give me a pray, praise chorus. And, and uh, let these that are, going, that are here at the altar first get back. Somebody want to go into room 206, if you will, please. Somebody will be there waiting for you to pray with you. The Lord bless you so much. 6 o'clock is our... Next, sir, we have a special speaker tonight, a very special speaker coming. You know we don't announce our speakers very rarely, so uh, <clears throat> come and the Lord will bless you. Hallelujah. <clears throat>